Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question. And it comes in from a gal who is talking about um, self-care and how, do, how can she kind of tune in within because she's got she's just so stuck on this person. And I, I get that. Um, she's in her late 20s and... You know, she's just got her heart set hook, line, and sinker on this gentleman who, you know, basically she got burned from uh, bad. And I think all the viewers here can relate to a situation where they feel burned, they feel scammed, and they feel scorn and animosity and anger. But it's also many layers to that with confusion and like, yeah, I need to sort this out. I need to, there's a nugget here that, you know, a lesson learned and to sort of look at red flags and learn like overall just a big global picture about relationships and people and there's just some really important lessons and um, I think that it's a great question um, to ask because you know you 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 realize you know you have to understand why then are you you know sort of you know ruminating on this person because generally there's an important lesson that you have to learn about um, you know, w within this, you know, it's a lot about um, kind of like a tuning fork or, you know, getting, um, you know, getting a, a, an awareness or perspective, just like when you were to go to like a, a football game or a concert, you know, where you sit depends on your, your experience, you know, and when they play, you know, your song, your perspective is, you know, different, or if they don't play, play anything, you know, so, you know, it's your perspective. And so you kind of learn to take charge of that over things um, in order to get, you know, get that. And self-care, you know, has to come into that because if you're so used to sort of obsessing about this person, you know, you're also sort of looking to resolve attention. Um, so when you're hooked, you know, sort of on this person, there's a tension there. There's a, a buzz. There's you know, an, an electric, you know, um, there's chemistry, there's something going on there that's very real for you. And so you have to acknowledge that and validate it and say, man, you know, and sort of live through those emotions, whether it's mourning the, the loss of them, um, you know, physically, uh, mourning the loss of them emotionally, psychologically, emotional, you know, for your dream, you know, because you have a dream, and a vision of your life moving forward, either having a family or, you know, things like that. So there's a lot that's built up and pent up um, into that. So yeah, that's that sometimes has to recycle for itself so you can sort of relive it and then reprocess it. So that's why. But if it's prolonged and really interfering, making you feel really, you know, um, that you want to isolate, you don't want to do anything, you're in a slump, you're in a funk, it's out of character for you and it's bothering you, you feel that you're too you know, shut down, um, you know, then you need to realize that you need, there is a, a focus within that you need to resensitize yourself to be able to do that. And, and sort of, it might feel very alone, wrong, um, immoral, guilty. Um, I'm not ready for this, all sorts of stuff, you know, but you need to sort of unplug energetically, you know, literally like pulling a light out of a socket and just allowing them to sort of just fade away for a little bit. You know, it's an allowing, just allowing them to be with reverence and with gratitude and respect. You know, you let them go with in positive emotion. So rather than you nasty, you know, there's a lot of people here, I, I guess on who have other YouTube channels who are, you know, they, you know, really build up a lot of stuff about anger, you know, at this person and getting back and revenge. Well, you know, anger and those volatile emotions, you know, are the ones that rise the most quickly, you know, uh, you know, it's like when you, you, you know, people just want to jump on the mad train, you know, the angry train, because those emotions trigger very quickly and they get excited very quickly and they usually have a short life. So you have to keep re-triggering the anger. You know, why would you want to do that to yourself? Why would you want to stay in a perpetual angry state? You know, you're about as happy as you make your mind up to be Abraham Lincoln, um, you know, so, you know, um, the, the tuning in is understood as an internal locus of control. So meaning that 
as you grow as a person, you know, there's a simple basic uh, psychological concept of external locus of control and internal locus of control. So external locus of control means that you are controlled by others around you, meaning when they come, you react. When they something, you react. You're very reactive. You become a very reactive personality. That can short out. That can lead to anxiety because you don't have that anchor. You are not centered or focused within, and you're sort of always sort of focused on things without. And that can be very productive and you know very awesome to be in support roles. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes to the absence of balance in life and being able to, um, you know, have boundaries and standards and and be able to stand up for yourself when things are not right is a very important step to take. So, you know, um, you need to, you know, unhook from them. In other words, all the dream, all the fantasy, you know, just allow yourself to, you know what, I can go back to that in, you know, an hour. Let me just come and get centered within, you know, for a moment and be able to just be at, at, at peace and without being trying to explain and justify yourself to this person or to life, um, I think is um, is very important that you adopt a fresh perspective um, on yourself, and and because there's that heavy-handed you know judgment situation that a lot of people carry around, and it's just like they're always carrying this big weight, you know, like a f five or fifteen pound weight with judgment, you know, duh, just you know, and they just pent up themselves. So you know, you need to realize that those sometimes those are lifestyle and uh, behavioral habits that aren't um, attractive for you, that aren't, uh, you know, conducive. It's, you know, you need to tune within. You need to, you know, uh, rearrange sort of your priorities and, you know, um, you know, and realize that sometimes you're running away from something um, that is triggering you. And so you got to get the trigger out and realize it's no longer um, there now. Um, and, you know, and realize that you you know, have this energetic space that you can work with, but it has to be more relaxed, you know, so you have to either dial it up or dial it down, but, you know, di you have to get used to dialing it in um, to kind of get over that um, and realize that, that the more that you can regain an internal locus of control, meaning that you're able to kind of, might sound strange, but just sort of come back into your own body and allow yourself just to be. So not having to be a mom, be a son, be a daughter, be a manager, you know, be a CEO, be a child, be, you know, just allow yourself to be and, you know, remove pressure from that which you feel is, is creating pressure around you. Um, expectations of others, um, judgment of others, criticism from others, people who are trying to mold and shape you from um, outside. Um, just, you know, you can just tell them in your heart, it's okay, I've got this within, you know, and then you speak that into existence. It's okay, I've got, you know, I've got, I can shape this from within, you know, I can uh, create this and model how I want to conduct myself from within. It's okay, I've got this. So you have to kind of regain your own inner voice and hold that space. If you're used to it being trampled over, you might have to pull it up off the ground and dust it off a little bit and get yourself back in the saddle. You know, um, you might have fallen off the horse, fallen off the cart for a while with this relationship. You know, and it's sort of, for a lot of people, um, from what I understand from our viewers, a lot of people, it really takes them down. You know, it, it's, it can be a real takedown um, that you did not see coming. I mean, almost to the point where it can become a life-changing or creating, you know, um, um, you know, disability, uh, dysfunction, um, you know, really, really um, an agitated situation that needs to be worked on. Um, and, and so the internal locus of control is where you want to sort of get used to working on within then. Um, and so rather than explaining and justifying yourself, I, you know, with others, tit for tat, or, you know, in those, just let that sort of game go for now. Just let it go. Um, you don't have to be a game piece doing, you know, that or this, just allow you, you know, but a lot of people, it, they find it difficult to separate because they always think that this person is going to judge them for being centered. You know, you know, you're going to pull away. You think you've, you know, 
so that's why they they still are leading you know by that um that person's evaluation it's like you have to regain that perspective within you know you have to be able to trump that you have to be able to overcome you know you have to be able to surmount you know you have to have that energy i, I would say is rising within you you know but you have to get your body used to it if you're always you know panicky pacey frantic always on the go you know and not taking time to just sort of get it together on this one topic you might need to put a little structure into your situation so you can you know handle that put it in a package and put it to bed you know um, because you deserve it and you don't want to have weeks months or god forbid years you know just still you know having this situation just sort of always sort of in the corner of your mind um, it can create a lot of um, you know a situation where you have to feel like you have to repress these memories and then a lot of sort of intrusive thoughts that spin off of it because of the situation so you're like always just sort of maintaining that bad memory you know, by having these thoughts and just feeling like, you know, you got a hook in you pulling you down. Um, however, um, what I was going to mention though, you know, when, when you're in that stage, it's important because you're, you're putting too much of yourself on this relationship. So it's like putting eggs in a basket. I've got a cut glass bowl over here with these eggs. These things are so cool. They're like hand painted. Uh, but I just put them here. And each one is like unique. It's really cool. I just love these textural things. Again, I, as in the book that I'm working on, I really believe in resensitizing yourself and getting your own experience in your own hand, like literally getting a grip after going through this sort of epiphenomenon. Um, you can, uh, if you are still sort of hooked and stuck in this person, you are putting a lot of eggs in that basket. You are putting a lot of eggs in that person, I, I, e, you know, if, as if they were a container, you're putting a lot of your eggs. So your worth, your food, your energy in, in on them. So that there's something you're really, you know, connecting with, but that is becoming dysfunction. It's not becoming formed correctly, or it's not understood. And, you know, it doesn't have enough form. It's still too formless. So anyway, um, you know, so you have to kind of reevaluate that and then realize that you ha are the one with the worth, not this other situation. You're the one with the functionality that needs to restore and regain all its working parts. So you don't have a wrench stuck in the engine in there that's like following you up because it, it will follow, follow you up if you don't work um, through it and just understand and put things in perspective um, so you can process it you know, um, evaluate it with a non-judgmental, just sort of objective, indifferent stance um, and realize that you've grown in awareness. So you're kind of like graduated up. You've got, you know, like an upgrade um, in your understanding of hu <clears throat> human relationships or familial or work or wherever, you know, intimate relationships and lesson learned. Um, you know, you have to also write it out. What are my lessons learned? So you're developing a voice within yourself. That's why in the book that I'm working on, you have to have a lesson learned. You have to be able to develop the voice within. You know, it, it first might sound very craggly, you know, cracky. It might not find, you know, then, but you need to get used to speaking in your power, in your tone and not evaluating it, not judging it and being yourself. You know, if, even if somebody was trying to you know, diminish it, you know, that, that diminisher is gone. It's absent from the picture. So, you know, that internal locus of control needs to be worked on. It needs to be practiced. It needs to be solidified. Uh, I call it the reco recovery date at least once a week. You know, really, you know, getting your, your sort of soul in alignment and taking it in a new, fresh, sharp direction and, you know, having self-esteem and then putting it out there and then nourishing yourself. Um, and doing something of an activity that is reflective and an energetic match to your higher self. So it's like, I've always wanted to go to that art museum and you just never have because you just have, you know, you've had too much going on. Well, part of your car, then you're going to take a browse through that art museum, or you might want to go check out some new, 
uh, four-wheel drive truck toy or whatever, you might want to go through and look at boats. You just observe, just going and sort of feeding that secure, healed whole part of yourself. Just observing, looking, feeding, and being very nurturing, and then coming back. But as you continue to do, th to do that every week, you're retraining your mind. You're using... Um, you're you're retraining how you feel physiologically as well. You know you're you're helping to cultivate new feelings, new memories, and create them on command. So it's like feel on command, you know, heal on command, and just sort of it's an allow state. It's when you're you know getting more in that heart space and that critic, all that you know has diminished and is trying to shut out. You know, shut out your voice is no longer. They're like the floodgates are open. You know, the world is your um, oyster. You know, you're looking at things with a whole perspective. You know, leaving behind your cares, leaving behind your concerns. It might seem frivolous. Those are the things that I want you to do, you know, on the recovery dates. Um, things that you have been denied. Uh, you've been living in denial. Uh, procrastination. I've uh, been putting things off. I mean, it, it's a normal, natural situation, you know, but where, you know, where have you not experimented enough to help you know, release some of this. Um, I know blocks are a big thing and having that external locus of control, I feel is a big contributor to keeping that block in place. You're still entertaining the, the, the abuser in your life. You're still, you know, um, you're still, um, you're just still, uh, cr creating, you know, you're, 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 you're just allowing that energy to sort of Pull and, and usurp your energy. You're still just allowing it. You know, some people call it vampiric, but you're still keeping a connection there, and it's pay, probably in the wrong place. So, it might be in sort of the fear-based and very low energy and very restrictive when you need to break up that energy, and it needs to be sort of more illuminated and understood for what it was, and you get a healthy, proper perspective, and then like you're healed, and you're not carrying that around with you to every other situation. You know, people carry around so many relationships that they feel either failed, went wrong, surprised them, took them for a ride, you know, um, it, you know, it, it's your life experience, you know, but I would say always, you know, when you look at, um, processing it, you know, I would say reflect back and, you know, look back at it energetically, like we, you know, and we talk about so many in a lot of these videos, these exercises, but sort of reflecting back, and working through it just to see, you know, what was at stake there, you know, what was going on and look at it, you know, being, you know, rigorously honest. In other words, coming clean with yourself and saying, okay, this happened and I'm a person and I, you know, if it's a mistake, it's not a mistake. Don't, you know, just don't worry about it. Stop judging. You know, it's not going to keep, get you into trouble. You know, it's not going to perpetually get you into trouble. It's not going to create a shame, you know, but if you carry it around that way, you're then carrying the shame and you're wearing it like a, like a, a scar, a badge around everywhere. And that's why you feel cr like crippled. Like literally you're becoming like a, you know, like a, a, a veteran a, of a relationship, you know, but don't put yourself in that lower status because that's a mindset. Like we've been talking about in a lot of our recent videos, um, the external locus of control to understand that a little bit more is to feel that they are always sort of the one in command and that you feel that you don't have control, that they have control to inflict pain and you don't know how to respond. You don't know how to feel good, you know. So that feeling good is where the focus needs to be, how you feel about yourself, your life, you know, what has transpired, whether you're grown and just sort of upright. You know, you just have a certain, um, you know, forgiveness, but a reverence for them, you know, and a gratitude. And, you know, it's just like a real honoring of the person, even, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, honor the abuser, but just, you know, release them. Because if you carry that around, you end up only breaking your own back. You know, you only end up continually breaking your own heart again and again. And you're like living in this past. And it's like, you know, so that's why, you know, I suggest a lot of the exercises to help you to create and explore and do the different and, and take it as a journey, meaning not as a, a sitting bench, you know, for uh, the rest of time, but to take it as part of your journey and be able to then, you know, not load up your pockets with so many of the negatives, empty out, you know, your pockets of these negatives and just 
be able to just be and not have to be that you have to feel perfect or that you're not going to say perfect or, you know, this perfect. Stop the evaluation. Stop the judging. That will help. And so that you can then be, have an internal locus of control and be centered and focused and be able to ex experience that space. Because if you've been with someone who's been highly manipulative, a con man, a con woman, a female psychopath, a male psychopath, we're talking, t you know, we're talking, you know, it's something you got to deal with, you know, and it's something you need to kind of be in um, cohesion with. Um and have processed and to be completely healed is like a phenomenon it's you know it's miraculous i mean it's a, a miracle energy to heal um profoundly so you know um th there are tools that will help you you physiologically to get to that space because you have to have the internal locus of control and then so in the quantum energy basically meaning what you focus on will continue to grow and manifest. So as you begin then to focus on what is healing and positive, and I call it resensitizing, you know, there's tools that you can then do to kind of direct, you know, focus back to yourself, not to become self-absorbed, but to work to strengthen and empower and enlighten you, just like um, giving oxygen and wood to a fire. You know, it just helps to reignite your passion for life again. Um, that's really kind of what, what the journey is about from here to get into what I call pod thinking, positive orderly direction thinking. So you have kind of like that, that passion for life. You've got that flame. You've got some heat going within you, some happiness, you know, and some softness. And it's not all the edge, you know, the edge is gone. You've, you know, you've helped to file down and remold that edge that was around that. Um, and you know, you're getting a stance back, um, but it's a physiological change, meaning you feel different, and you know you begin to sit um, and with uh, with yourself and just learn how to relax, and even in a meditative state, and just allow your mind to calm down, so you can begin then to call, uh, get a handle on sort of your brainwave states, you know, getting into you know out of the sort of more hectic brainwave, you know, and analytic, you know, just sort of dropping that down to a slower brainwave state um whether it's beta you know delta is like the deepest when you're in sleep and then it's uh, beta and alpha um you know you're getting into a better wavelength so your brain is you know more harmonious harmonious it's more balanced you know you're more graceful you know you're you don't feel uh, so much uh, pain you know you're just sort of living freely um you're not getting hung up on things. You're you're letting that go. You know, you're so you're sort of observing and evaluating and saying, nope, that's negative orderly direction, thinking, behaving, feeling, and becoming. I'm over this way. So you're you're kind of redirecting yourself like like a trajectory for like an airplane. You're like, yeah, we're going over here. So you're setting the controls, you know, and you're resensitizing yourself. How do you resensitize yourself? You know, all your senses. I talk about in the book that I'm working on how important it is to like literally um, get, you know, a tangible sense of healing, <clears throat> you know, getting your perspective back, getting your thoughts clear, um, you know, the sense of touch, you know, learning how to do uh, dry brush techniques. Um, you know, we have uh, like using this and then, you know, doing this on the skin, you know, and really helping to exfoliate. And this feeling is like, it's like, really, it's like a massage. So this is stimulating and it's kind of, you're bringing this, you know, and you can do it, you know, wherever. Um, I mean, obviously not just, you know, wherever right now, but, or, I mean, you could do it at your house. This is, um, it's called Tuscan Hills, you know, if you want to, but this helps to bring good feeling back to the skin. So like if you're used to being intimate with this person or budding up, you know, then, you know, you might not be, you might be sort of feeling um, touch starved. So then you, you know, this, this dry brushing is really good. It helps to bring um, feeling back to your skin. Um, there's other things we've got. Um, things like this, you know, you've got these massage uh, rollers that you can work knots out and just move. I mean, seriously, I mean, we're talking about getting your life back, feeling better. Um, these, I mean, this might cost like $5.99 US dollars. You got a knot right there, you know. If you're like me, you do a lot of work on the computer, 
you know, you get uh, tight muscles. I mean, this just, this little thing goes right in and you loosen it up. I mean, and then you just, you feel all of a sudden your shoulders more relaxed, you know, and you can use it wherever you got ones for your neck, which I really like, uh, for the resensitizing is like these, these are, um, tools, uh, from the Redwoods of Thailand. These are super cool. These are like all handmade out of wood. So they, they use these in Thai massage. This is like a family who's been doing it for like three generations. You can check them out on ET. I, I, that's how I say it. E-T-S-Y. <coughs> E-T-S-Y. E-T. Etsy. But these are really like amazing. And these are uh, made out of a, a Thai redwood and, you know, uh, generations old design. And they have like different types of... You know, where you can really get in there, um, you know, and you can uh, do different things, you know, and, and just sort of get the, the flow back into your body. Um, and, you know, it's it's an important thing that you do this with all of your senses. So same thing, I talk about um, priming the subconscious. Um, what else? You've got... Um, like the yoga decks, you can get um, yoga decks, and we'll show you postures. Um, I think you got like this. This is a good tool. It's the yoga deck, and it will show you, you know, like different positions that you can do to help you physiologically get the flow back. And just do flip cards, you know, and it, it talks about, you know, um, the position, um, some of, of its benefits, and you know how, you know, how the how to practice. These are lovely. There's all sorts of things I talk about that you can do to just sort of surround yourself with better influences and apply them. It's no, you know, when I talk about the tools here, these have to be applied, meaning you go and you do it. Maybe you take this video. In fact, man, I feel so much better already on my left arm. As you guys know, I had that neck surgery. Whoa. And I had, um, you know, problems on this whole left side and it still, uh, uh, is the pain thing, but, uh, this already feels really good. I mean, it wakes up some sort of circulation. I want to keep doing that. I'm going to think I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to do a full body one of those. Um, it's, it's a, it's an important thing. So you, it's an internal locus of control so that you are, you know, doing self care. You're, um, you're, you're feeding yourself nutrition. You're listening to good music or silence or pleasing sounds. 432 Hertz music. Um, you know, crystal singing bowls. Um, some light flutes. You know, some of the great meditative mind videos that they have are, are great just to help to create the an ambiance. You know, re-stimulating yourself. Having the proper colors that are soothing for you around you. Getting your life organized. Getting rid of things that aren't energizing to you, um, you know, and you, so you need, but you need to sort of do all senses and get sort of textual about things and, and be proactive for yourself. Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a wonderful day.